right now you're looking at a person who is not just a person. What are you exactly then? Somehow God is in me and there's a sense in which I am like God and man all at once. The real me is just like God. Friends, we could unpack that on many levels and show how brazenly heretical that is and disturbing that is. But dear friends, when the Bible says that God created man in his image, that means that as human beings, you and I are the pinnacle of God's creation. We are the pinnacle of his creation. And we have the potential and the capacity through a saving relationship with Jesus Christ to know God. None of the other created order has that privilege and ability, but we do. We have the potential and the capacity through a saving knowledge of Jesus Christ to know God, but that does not mean we are God. The Bible is very clear. There is only one God and God is a jealous God and he will not share his glory with another. And if I remember my Bible correctly, wasn't the desire to be just like God kind of what led to the whole fall thing to begin with? That led to the very first sin. How ironic that the faith preachers, the prosperity preachers are teaching as truth the very thing that led to this whole fallen state in the first place. And who else in the Bible wanted to be just like God? Satan. Satan did. Lucifer did. He wanted the worship that God was getting. He wanted the worship. He wanted the praise for himself. And he could have killed, he would have killed God if he could have. And it got him and a third of the angels along with him kicked out of heaven. The little God's doctrine is quite literally a doctrine of demons. A doctrine of demons and the faith preachers teach it as truth but their little gods doctrine dear friends their teaching that we are in fact little gods is the reason why they hold so tenaciously to prosperity to health and wealth because we're gods who fills all in all without any comment please let's pause and be still and ask Jesus to speak his word to us. problem in the church today. Divine revelation knowledge. People are all the time saying, God spoke to me. God spoke to me. Let me tell you what he has to say. God spoke to me. He told me to tell you that you need to do such and such. He told me to tell you, you need to do this. Pastor, God spoke to me and he told me to tell you that our church needs to go this direction. And I would hear this all the time. You know, I'm sure you, I know you've heard it. Everybody's saying God speaks. Have you ever wondered, what's wrong with me? You know, all these people claiming that God speaks to them, have you ever wondered, what's wrong with me? You know, I, I, I don't hear God talk to me like that. Are they, are they more spiritual than I am? Have they got a closer walk with God than I do? What's wrong with me? Why can't I hear the still, small voice? How does God speak to us today? 
Well, let's go to the text. Hebrews 1, 1 and 2. The writer of Hebrews says, God, after he spoke long ago to the fathers and the prophets in many portions and in many ways in these last days, notice the contrast, in these last days has spoken to us in his Son, whom he appointed heir of all things, through whom also he made the world. So the writer of Hebrews says that in the old days, in the Old Testament, God spoke in many different portions and in many different ways. Indeed, he did. God spoke to Moses through a, uh, up on the mountain through a storm and thunder. God spoke to Elijah through a still, small voice, which, by the way, was not some inner impression that was still an audible voice. Numbers chapter 22, God even made a donkey talk. So God did indeed speak in many different portions and in many different ways. But in these last days, he has spoken to us in his Son. Friends, Jesus is the final speaking of God. Amen. The final speaking of God. Everything that God has to say, he has said in his Son, Jesus Christ. And we have a perfect, inerrant, infallible, all-sufficient record of that in his word. So Jesus is the final speaking of God. <clears throat> 